Okay, so my name is Sarah, and I'm from Kansas, and I'm just wondering how many of you had this image in your head when I just said I was from Kansas? This little image up here on the screen. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Is this what you were thinking? <laughs> okay, maybe this one. Would it be the next one? No? I mean, yeah, Toto. Was it Dorothy or Toto? Which one, right? Toto? Good. I am blonde, people call me Dorothy, I'm totally fine with it, so, or maybe it was this, was it the giant sunflower, was that maybe what you were thinking? Or how about this one, my personal favorite, the tornado, who thought of a tornado, any twister lovers in the house, yeah? Um, so I'm from Kansas, not too far from you guys, but people don't really know people from Kansas, so now you got a friend from Kansas, amen? Um, but what I really want to talk about tonight is, like Deacon said, we all had to come up with God is. Um, so many things, but I came up with what kind of close to my heart is God is life. And a little thing you might not know about me is I'm actually a trucker. Okay, just kidding. I'm not a trucker. Um, <laughs> but I thought if I had an 18 wheeler, this is what I would pick. Amen. Like, can you imagine driving around in this thing? Like phenomenal, right? So I chose God is life. And the reason why I chose God is life is because that was the one for me. You know, I grew up as a Catholic. My parents are awesome. We went to church every Sunday, prayed, bless us, O Lord, and like rosaries when people passed away. But, you know, it wasn't one of those things where, I, I mean, everything was just awesome. And I grew up on a farm, and, you know, it was just a wonderful childhood. And then I hit junior high, and I just loved junior high. I mean, it was awesome. I mean... You didn't love junior high? Okay. Um, junior high might be like the worst three years of anyone's life. Amen? Like, <laughs> this is the worst. Um, I was bullied so bad in junior high, I had to switch schools. And I know that that sounds kind of intense. And I, I look back on that time in my life, and I'm just, I don't know what, you know, where God was in that. And, you know, all those nights of just crying and not knowing, like, what the heck is going on? And then you go into high school, and you're like, it's got to get better, right? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so, um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I felt like there was always this intense amount of pressure to be perfect. And I don't know, it's like, it's kind of like Dorothy, like the Oz thing. There's someone up in this machine behind the green curtain that's like cranking out this world's idea of perfect, right? For the ladies, it's, you know, we have to be like a size negative two and like big doe eyes and like, you know, long neck and like perfect bouncy hair. And if you can't figure it out, there's at least 10,000 videos on Pinterest to help you figure it out, right? Like, um, and you know, you have to have the perfect group of friends and the trophy boyfriend and, you know, you have to have the perfect, life's about taking the perfect picture at the perfect place at the perfect time so you can post it, filter it, and, or edit it, filter it, and post it. Like that is what life is about. It's the world's idea of perfect. And for the men, I don't know, I get this image in my head of like a guy, like a rapper in a white tux with like shades and a grill, and he's standing on a car, and there's just like women crawling up his legs, and there's stacks of cash, and he's just like going like this, you know, like, <laughs> it's Pitbull, right? I mean, it's Pitbull. Like, everybody wants to be Pitbull. I want to be Pitbull. Okay. Anyway, so this world's idea perfect, it's just kind of breathing down your neck, and not on top of that, you know, you have your own checklist of what you think is perfect. And it get, it's just exhausting. And I know for myself, I wanted to, I, you know, I went to youth group. I was, you know, on the God squad. I wanted to please my parents. I wanted to get straight A's. I played sports. I played in the band. I cheered. I, you know, hey, what do you need? I'll do it. Like, I signed up for everything. I was class president. Just, I want to be whatever I need to be. I did it all. And I was so tired and I was so hollow and I was so empty, but I kept that image going because I just knew that it just, as tired as I was, I, I was striving after something that I knew would pay off. I knew it. But I was so empty. And I remember I was 17 and I got a phone call from a friend and they were at a neighboring youth group and she said, hey, do you want to go to St. Louis with us? And I was like, get out of school, go to St. Louis? Yeah, I'll go to St. Louis with you. And I met someone there that, that changed my life. And... His name is, well, St. John Paul II. And I went into an arena, 20,000 high school, college students. I was screaming so loud I couldn't hear myself scream. Have you guys ever had that in, you know, time in your life? And I remember thinking, I, I, I love God, I appreciate my faith, but what am I doing here? And I remember this sweet little man, you know, took his cane, hobbled up on stage, and the minute he got on stage, the place went nuts. 
And I just started crying. And I looked next to me, and there's, like, this six-foot-five football player that was with us, and he's just, like, sobbing, like, snot, like, everything, just sobbing. And I looked to my other side, and there's, like, two of my girlfriends, and they're just sobbing. I was like, what is it with this man that makes us just fall to our knees and just, I mean, we were just mesmerized by this guy. And this was what, you know, if you guys know, I know you all, I hope you have the same love for John Paul II, but this is one of his phrases that he always said was, be not afraid. And this is his handwriting. And, you know, I see him as such a grandpa, a spiritual grandpa to me. I mean, he really seriously changed my life. And, you know, in high school, I was, I was going through the motions, and even after I saw him, I was growing in my faith, but there was something that I was deathly afraid of. And what I was deathly afraid of was that I thought that if I chose God to, to be the Lord and King of my life, that I would lose everything that I was working so hard to be that perfect image that the world saw me or wanted me to be. I thought I would lose it. And it scared me because that was hard work. And I know Every single person in here is working just as hard as I was back then. I know what that's like because it doesn't go away. All of us, the whole speaking team, like all the priests in here, all the adorable white nuns out there, like we all have this coming at us all the time, this like you, you, you have to be perfect, you have to be perfect. And I remember the, with the Be Not Afraid, it was, I was in college, and I came across the scripture verse John 10.10. 10. It said, you know, I, I love this quote, you know, I, I come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And I was face to face with that decision. Sarah, do you want the life that you are forming and living and striving for, this life that is pretty much wrapped up in just what you think is best, what you want? Or do you want the life that I have to offer you? And he knocked and he knocked and he knocked. And I avoided him, I ran from him. I, I mean, God, was, God knocked on my heart all the time, all kinds of things, all kinds of signs. And I just still had that fear. I didn't know which life I wanted. And I remember I was in college and I, I found myself on a retreat and I went into the confessional, you know, like typical retreat style, you know, you're like, I'm not gonna go to confession, I'm good, I'm not this time. Like, I went like six months ago, I'm totally fine, right? Like, it's fine. And then you find yourself in line and you're like, what am I doing here? Like, I didn't wanna, okay, I'm in the confessional, awesome. Like, you just feel someone like kicking you into it, right? And I remember I knelt down and everything that I was struggling with, everything I just told you, just this image, you know, the pressure to date, the pressure to be perfect, the pressure to, you know, keep up with the world's idea, the image, all the insecurities, it just, bah. And the priest, I remember he, it was so sweet, and he just said, you know what? He's like, that's heavy. And I was like, yeah, tell me about it. You know, like, it's heavy. And he said to me, he said something that really affected me. He said, Sarah, you, have you ever heard be perfect? And he's like, you hear it, but have you ever heard the, the scripture, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect? Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I had the wrong checklist for a long time. I was all wrapped up in the externals or the accolades or the, you know, what is she doing? You know, what can she do for them? What could she do for this group? What can she do for you? What can she do for this group of friends? Like, I was all wrapped up in what perfect was to everyone else. But I did not see the list of what be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I didn't see it. And I remember after, you know, just being so wrapped up in it, and the next thing I saw was this image of our Lord that you all are going to be with tonight. And I saw it and I said, that's what I want. Like, I want to return to him over and over again. You guys, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. If we're gonna be perfect like our Heavenly Father, like, that's even more exhausting than the world's idea of perfect. Did you know that? But that's why we're here tonight because we can return to this over and over and over again. We can come to him, flaws and all. And that's the life that he wants to give you. He doesn't want you to hide all your you know, baggage, all your drama, all the things that you don't want him to see, all the things you're not. We're so focused on what we're not. We don't think about what we wanna be. This is what we wanna be, life in him. And the blessings have come 
just unbelievable blessings have come from just being in life with him. This is my family. I want to show you. Just, I, I look 12, so I need to prove that I'm actually married. Um, I'm not 12. I'm actually 31. So um, this is my gorgeous husband, Swaff. His name's Andy. Our last name's Swaff. Or everyone calls him Swaff. You can call me. Well, they call him Swaff. Swaff Daddy, Swaff Diddy, P. Diddy, Swaff, whatever. I'm Mama Swaff. Whatever you want to call me. It's all good. But we're married, and then we have three little kids. So Thomas is, Thomas is eight. And then he's just very handsome or cute. And then, oh, Dorothy. I had Dorothy, too. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you go back, it was Fulton is the next one. Are you guys? Yeah, Fulton. Any Fulton Sheen fans in the house? Archbishop Fulton Sheen? If you don't know him, get to know him. And then baby Kate. Kate is our three-year-old. And I know. And she's just edible. She's edible, right? She's just edible. So this is my family. And I just wanted to share with you, I brought, I love showing all these pictures um, but, you know, we look at Facebook, we look at social media, we look at Twitter, Instagram, all of it, and you only see the highlight reel, right? It took almost 1,200 pictures to get those five. <laughs> so I brought with you a couple of the outtakes. Uh, that one's one of my favorites. Um, this one, Kate, just awesome. And this is where they just brought to tackle Kate, yep. This is my Fulton scaling the light pole while we're trying to take a picture together. And that's my family. So I just wanted you guys to see, like, no one's perfect. What you see in social media, what you see on TV, it's not always real. And I want you to bring real here tonight, here this weekend. I want you to let God show you the life that he is offering you. Be perfect as he is perfect. Not the world's idea perfect that comes flying at you all the time. Put it, just put it away. Put it down. Let him show you this life. I'm so excited to be with you this weekend. I'm excited to be a mess with you. I'm excited to be real with you. I'm excited to be with you. And I ask that you just really think about what life you want. Amen.